Around a year ago, I made a tutorial on how to manually read a MIDI file. However, it was so confusing that even I, the creator of the video, couldn't understand it. In addition, I barely did any research when I made the video. So in today's video, I will be giving a detailed guide on how to properly read a MIDI file. The first thing you have to do, of course, is find a MIDI file. Because I am boring, I will use a chromatic scale with modified note lengths. If you open a MIDI file and notepad, it would look something like this, a jumble of random letters, symbols, spaces, and new lines. To make it greatly easier to read, download Hacks Workshop, or any other Hacks Editor, and open the MIDI file. Now, you can easily distinguish between each byte of the MIDI file. To start with, I will teach you the structure of a MIDI file. In the start of the MIDI file, there is a header. The first four bytes of every MIDI file will look identical. These four bytes mark the start of the header. The next four bytes mark the number of bytes in the header to follow, and it will always be six bytes. That is eight bytes of wasted space. Be better, MIDI files. The following two bytes mark the MIDI file type, which can either be a zero or a one. A file type of zero means the MIDI file only has one track. A file type of 1 is the most commonly used, and means the MIDI file can have one or more tracks. The next two bytes of the header mark the number of tracks. And the final two bytes of the header mark the ticks per beat. This is the most important thing you should remember from the header, since it is the basic unit for note lengths. Next up, you will see something similar to the start of the header, except the last two bytes are different. These four bytes, known as the track header, mark the start of a track. Depending on how many tracks there are, you might see the track header. The four bytes after the track header show how many bytes in the track will follow. Now, we get to the juicy stuff. There can be many events in a track. These include the note on, note off, delta time, meta, instrument selection, pitch bend, and controller events. Note that before every event, there is always a delta time. A delta time tells you exactly how long to wait before reading the next event. In many cases, the meta events would be in the first track, then the following tracks would have a combination of the others. So, let's have a look at a meta event. A meta event can tell you one of 19 things, shown in this table. They are easy to identify, since they always start with FF. The byte after FF identifies the type of meta event, and the next byte tells you the number of bytes to follow in the meta event. The next bytes include the actual data of the meta event. The most common meta event is the time signature, marked by FF5804. Here is an example of a 4-4 time signature. Let's look at its structure. The first byte is the numerator, and the second byte is the denominator. Then why is the second byte too? Well, the denominator is encoded differently. It is the reciprocal of the negative power of 2. So, 2 to the negative second power is 0.25, and the reciprocal of 0.25 is 4. The next two bytes tell you the number of MIDI clocks per quarter note, and it is always 18, or 24 in decimal. The final two bytes are the number of 30 second notes in a quarter note, and it is normally 08. Most MIDI files will also have a tempo, marked by FF5103. The tempo is also encoded differently. To get the real tempo, convert the 3 bytes to decimal, then divide 60 million by the number. In my MIDI, it says 07082, which is 461538 in decimal. 60 million divided by 461,538 is approximately 130, so my tempo is 130 BPM. If your quotient is more than a hundredth off, then the tempo is probably a decimal. The last important meta event is the track end event, which is FF2F00. The other meta events aren't essential to reading the MIDI file, so I will not explain them. Next. I will tell you about delta times. Delta times occur between every event in the MIDI file. To properly read delta times, you must first convert it to binary. A delta time can be made of multiple bytes, especially for longer notes. If the binary value starts with a 1, then it means it is not the last byte of the delta event. 
If the binary value starts with a zero, then it is the last byte of the delta event. To find the real value, remove the first bit so you will have seven digits. Then, convert that into decimal. The delta time is then read like a base 128 number. For example, if your delta time has two bytes, then multiply the first byte by 128 and the last byte by 1. Finally, divide your value by the ticks per bit I mentioned earlier in the video. To become good at sight reading MIDI files, you must be really really good at math. Now, let's move on to note on, note off events. To identify a note on event, look for a byte after a delta event that starts with a 9. The second letter in the byte tells you the MIDI channel of the note. Next, there are two data bytes that range from 0 to 127. The first one tells you the pitch, with 60 being middle C, and the second one tells you the volume. A note off event begins with an 8, and has the same structure as a note on event, except the volume is 0. The note off event stops the previous note on event with corresponding pitch and channels. This prevents MIDI from properly encoding overlapping notes with the same pitch. Between a note on a note off event, there is generally a delta time of over 0. But if the delta time is 0, that means multiple notes are played at once, or multiple notes are released at once. This is how MIDI files can store chords. The last important event in MIDI is the instrument selection. The instrument selection generally occurs at the start of a MIDI file, and has two bytes. The letter of the first byte will be a C, and the second letter is the channel. The second byte is the actual instrument number, from 0 to 127. In case you didn't know, MIDI uses a thing called General MIDI Library, which has instruments, sounds, and synths listed from 0 to 127. You can use the list to find what your instrument is. Finally, MIDI files also have pitch band and controllers. Pitch band is mostly used in guitar MIDIs, and they denote slight changes in pitch required for glissandos. They are stored as Z, then two data bytes. The first data byte is the rightmost byte, and the second is the leftmost byte. Controllers are similar to pitch band, except they start with B. They control things like dynamics, sustain, and modulation for a specific channel, denoted by the second letter of the B byte. They have two data bytes. The first one is the controller number from 0 127, and the second one is the value assigned to the controller from 0 127. You can also reference a list of controllers to see what you have to change. Finally, I want to warn you that not all MIDI files have the same format, and this video can apply to all MIDI files. For example, these cores MIDI's have this weird 10 byte string placed randomly, and I still haven't figured out why. And yeah, that is my improved guide on how to manually read a MIDI file. No more using confusing MIDI players, because you can now become one yourself. See you next time, and bye.